По случаю провода в сборной Украины по баскетболу на чемпионат Европы в Литву. Не дали чемпионата, но и за получение лицензии на Олимпийские игры 2012 года в Лондоне. Также генеральный директор компании Боска Днепр Супруненко Михаил Олегович. Uh, trying to get better each time out. Um, I can say that if the game was 20 minutes long, we would be undefeated right now. Unfortunately, it's 40 minutes long, and we have to get better for those other minutes. Sometimes, sometimes it's almost 30 minutes. Sometimes. <laughs> But I, uh, I do want to mention that. Uh, I'm very proud when I watch our team wear the equipment that we have been supplied because it makes us feel uh, like all of the top level teams. We can go to our meals together, we can go to a public appearance together, and we can all wear the same equipment that you've supplied for us. So uh, my thanks to you, I know the team well, sends their thanks as well because it's a very important thing in molding a team and keeping them all with the same mindset moving forward. So thank you very much for that. Okay. So we're back here for three days. We'll get a little practice in. We have the opportunity to work a few days before we head to Kaipeda. And then we will open up on the 31st. The committee was very good to us. They gave us two easy opponents to start with, Russia and Slovenia. Um, and then Uh, we get a day off after those two, so maybe they felt that we need a day off after playing those two people. Uh, it's going to be very difficult on bracket. Uh, they take the top three teams. Those three teams move on to the next round. And that's what our goal is. Our goal is to wind up being one of those three teams to have a chance to move on to the round of 12. So if we can take our good minutes and extend them, uh, we understand that you can't get by in the European Championships just playing 30 good minutes. You have to play 40 good minutes, and it's going to take all of our players playing extremely well. But uh, we're getting better, and uh, we'll work here a couple days before we fly out on Monday. Um, we have had 40, 40 practices now, 40 practices since we've started on July 18. July 18, I think, was our first day. We've had 40 practices, and we've had probably 11, 12 exhibition games along the way. Uh, so we've gotten a lot of work in, uh, but sometimes it's, you know, getting the group together, you're dealing with injuries. We've had a couple players who have not been able to practice as much as we would have liked them, and they would have liked to practice because of injuries. Uh, we've lost an important player due to injuries, uh, but that's part of the game. That's part of the nature of the game. And also it's learning, learning how to play 40 minutes. Uh, sometimes you play a good 26, 28 minutes, and then you forget, you lose your concentration because you're not mature enough, you haven't been there before, you don't have the experience to understand that you have to play all 40 at the same level. But you learn that, that playing these good teams like we just got done playing, that helps us understand how hard they play. It's interesting, we can be leading these teams at halftime, and then suddenly, somewhere in the second half, we hit a stretch Well, we don't play the same way. And the other team kind of picks it up a little bit. And that's where we have to react a little better. We have to come back at them just as hard. We have 14 players right now that have been with us uh, on this trip to Turkey, Izmir and uh, Istanbul. And now for Eurobasket, we're going to have to cut two players from our team. And the smart thing to do is wait until the last possible moment because if you should get an injury, you may have to shift one of those players into that spot at the last second. So what we'll do is we'll, I will try and extend it as far as I can uh, until Mr. Volkov says that's enough, I need 12 names and we'll make the decision at that time. But uh, we have 14 and there are three or four that are very close for those last two positions. It's a very good, it's a very good observation that you make because the players who are starting to sign contracts now in Europe 
I think are in for a big surprise when they start playing over here in Europe. It starts out with the rules, to be honest with you, interpretation of rules. The game here is much, much more physical than the game is in the United States, in the NBA. Blocks and screens here that are legal would be played in American football rather than American basketball. But here, there's no fouls call. So you have to understand when you play in these games, you can't turn and look at the official and think you're gonna get a call on everything. It doesn't happen that way. This is a man's game over here. You've gotta come ready for the contact. You have to be ready mentally for the contact to keep yourself in the game without losing control because it gets so physical where you can't play the game of basketball any longer. The, the, skill, the skill development here is at a very high level for so many of these teams. So many of their players can dribble the ball, can pass the ball, can shoot the ball. They cut many more times. There's much more movement in the offenses here than in the NBA. Uh, and as a result of that, you're forced into many, many decisions on one possession. Never mind, you know, a series of possessions. Just one possession, you have many decisions to make how you're going to play it defensively. We played last night against New Zealand, and their offense is a very difficult offense to guard. Very difficult. And because they play only one big man and a number of smaller players, you are constantly moving and fighting screens and players coming off screens. And because they shoot the ball so well, I thought we did a great job for one half of basketball guarding them. Uh, at halftime of the game, we had really done a great job of shutting them down. But then we hit one stretch in the third quarter where we let them back in the game again, turn over, they score, turn over, they score. They go on an 11 nothing run, and all of a sudden the 13 point lead that we had was gone. And then down the stretch of the game, the last two minutes, tie score, one down, tie score, three down, game's over. So it's, it's uh, the coaches really do a good job here, excellent job coaching their team, so many of them. I think it's a very good uh, observation that uh, you saw he did not play the same kind of game uh, in the second tournament as he did in the first tournament. Uh, but uh, teams played him a little differently in the second tournament. I, I think we took a lot of good out of this last tournament because he was a different Steve Burt last night than he was the night before against Montenegro. After the Montenegro game, we sat, we showed video of the game, uh, the coaches broke it down for him, tried to explain you know, what happened in game number one against Montenegro and what we could do differently in game number two against New Zealand. Uh, the teams are starting to double team him now to try to get the ball out of his hands. They don't want him to have the ball in his hands because he finds open players, he penetrates, and he causes a lot of problems for the defense. So when they run two or three players at him, he's got to find open people. But then those players have to make something happen. They just can't catch the ball and try to give it back to Steven again and say, you know, you do it. It puts too much pressure on him the other players have to assert themselves. Otherwise, you see the high number of turnovers that we've seen in the last two games from Steven. He's had a lot of turnovers, which has not been the norm for him. He's kept his turnovers down. So, you know, I look at it from the standpoint, I'm glad it happened now. I'm glad we could see it, and we have a couple days to work on that and correct that to make the other players understand what they have to do when teams double-team him and he passes the ball, we have to get more of an attack mode from the other players. But a uh, good observation on your part. Uh, the, two, uh, the two gentlemen that uh, you mentioned felt they didn't get a chance. 
Um, I watch practice every day along with my assistant coaches, and we watch who is able to run in the drills and not be last in every drill. We watch who knows their assignments on the floor. Uh, and in the short period of time that we have to get ready for the European Championships, it would be nice if I could be charitable and give the lesser players the same opportunities that the better players get. But you earn the minutes that you play by your productivity. So I explained to these young men before we let them go, um, particularly uh, in Andre's case, should I play you 30 minutes in the exhibition games and sit people down like Slava and Lushuk and Pesharov and only give them five or eight minutes? That's not how it works. The way it works is when you practice every day, you show me and you show my staff that you're a better player than those other people. And then if you're a better player, you'll get more minutes. We can only keep 12 people on the team. I can't keep 16 people or 14 people. So it has to be the top 12. So perhaps they saw themselves that they weren't one of the top 12 people on the team. I had one young man who came to me and said, I think I should leave. I don't see any way I can make this team. Well, if that's his attitude, then he should leave. If he doesn't want to compete for a spot and he thinks that the other players are better, then he should leave. He should go. Because I want people there that compete and try and earn a spot. You have people on the team that aren't so talented, yet they give everything they have, every ounce that they have, and they do what they're supposed to do. They know their job and they do it. They play to the best of their ability. Yet you find other players that have more talent, but there's always an excuse. When something goes wrong, there's always an answer. But it was over and but and this and but because they can't stand up and see that it may have been them. They're blinded to their own game. All right, so instead they push it off on somebody else it's done the standing up and taking the responsibility. And you see this every day as you watch players. Which players fight their way through it? Which players are weak and give in? And when you build a championship team, you build it with people that are not weak. And it's not just talking about strength this way. It's talking about strength here in your head as well as the other.